The universe is a graveyard, filled with the remains of countless stars. Looking out from the Earth, we see their remains marked by colourful and spectacular headstones called nebulae. These nebulae mark not only the end of a star, but also the end of the planets that once orbited it, and any life that called those worlds home. Every second, hundreds of stars in our observable universe die, through either colossal supernova explosions, or by throwing off their outer layers. Each death creates a new nebulae, a fitting tribute to the solar system that once was. And it may seem like this is the end of a star, but in many ways, it's just the beginning. At the beginning of time, our universe was fairly simple, filled almost entirely with hydrogen, the simplest atom possible. By itself, hydrogen can't do too much. The most complex molecule it can make is molecular hydrogen, or H2, which is just two hydrogen atoms stuck together. A universe of only hydrogen wouldn't be that exciting. With gravity, hydrogen can be pulled together into enormous spheres of plasma, where at the centre, the simple atoms can collide and make heavier and more complex atoms. Throughout a star's lifetime, it will turn the simplest atom into an array of complex and exciting atoms, with which a complex and exciting universe can be constructed. But no exciting molecules, planets, or even life could be made if stars held on to their treasure forever. Fortunately, they don't. The nebula are evidence of just that. The beautiful colours of a nebula reveal to the universe that there is more than just hydrogen. Every atom and every molecule shine in their own way, so when we look at the diversity of colours inside a nebula, we can see the building blocks of a more interesting universe. One not made solely of hydrogen. If we take a look at the Ring Nebula, we can see the colours of new complex atoms streaming out into the universe. In this image taken by the Hubble Space Telescope, there is a ring of red surrounding the nebula. This red belongs primarily to hydrogen, the unused fuel of the now dead star. Going inwards, we see a very different blue-green color. Nothing like the red of hydrogen. So we know that there is a new atom in there. In this case, the blue-green belongs to oxygen. In its death, this star, which would have been much like our sun, is sending enormous amounts of newly made oxygen out into the universe. But to us, this nebula and others like it seem static, frozen in time. How can they be filling the universe with new atoms if they're stuck in place? Well, the truth is, they're not stuck. In fact, they are moving incredibly quickly, but space and these nebulae are enormous. To see movement of old nebulae, we would need to observe them over many centuries, but for young nebulae, we can look at them over the course of a couple of years. The Crab Nebula is only 1,000 years old, and marks the grave of a massive star that died in a supernova. Powered by an ancient explosion and a neutron star at its centre, the material of the Crab Nebula rushes outward at 15,000 kilometres per second. And since it's still relatively small, we can see this nebula expand. Over the course of a decade, amateur astronomer Detlef Hartmann imaged the Crab Nebula and saw the expansion. It may not look like much, but between the first image from 2008 and the last in 2017, the Crab Nebula expanded nearly 1 trillion kilometers, or six times the size of our solar system, in just 10 years. These nebulae are expanding, but it takes a very long time for them to mix with the massive interstellar nebulae around them. For the Crab Nebula, it will probably be hundreds of thousands of years before its new atoms are spread out through space, and the Crab Nebula is no more. As the grave markers of dead stars fade away, the possibility emerges for new and more complex stars and solar systems to form. Over the course of millions to billions of years, these new atoms will form new stars and new planets, like our Sun and Earth. 
This story has played out countless times across the universe, making the wonderful complexity of our universe today possible. The existence of planets and life, like you and me, is because of stars long past. Our universe may be a graveyard, but we're only here because of that. One day our own sun will die, filling the universe with more oxygen, like the star that made the Ring Nebula. The Earth surely won't survive, and maybe humanity won't either. But after billions of years, the sun's atoms as well as our own will be part of something new and something exciting. As Carl Sagan once said, we are star stuff. And one day, stars may even be made of us. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video. This one was a little bit darker than usual to reflect the time being around Halloween. But it is the reality of the situation. One day our sun will be no more and the earth along with it. And perhaps humanity will join them in the nebulae that the sun becomes. And the question will become, what has humanity left behind in the universe? Other than our atoms, of course. And at the moment, it only looks like what we'll be leaving behind are our space probes, like the Voyages and New Horizons. Maybe humanity will break out of the solar system and leave a little bit more behind. I'd certainly like that, but it's not guaranteed. But anyway, thank you for watching the video, and if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments below, and I'm always happy to talk more about science. But for now, thanks for watching.